Hey guys, this is Ed Rowe. Today, I'm going to show you how you can create a simple D3 chart in React with hooks. The first thing we're going to do is install Create React App. If you go to their website, you grab this piece of code, and then we can go into our terminal and run that. Give it a few seconds. Once that's done, we're going to go into the My App directory. And we're also going to install D3. And after we finish that, we are going to go to our app.js file. And we are going to remove all this header code that we do not need. And we are going to remove the logo information. And we're going to save that. Now that we're ready to write the code. Um, first things first, the reason why there's a lot of confusion for React and D3 is that they both control the DOM. You need to let D3 handle the controlling of the DOM. And the way we do this is through use ref. Um, but before that, let's import a few things. We're going to import React, use state, use ref, and use effect from React. And then we're going to create some mock data. So you can use whatever data you want that's in the array. But what we are going to use is just some fake values, 25, 50, 35, 50, 94, 10. And then we're going to set up an SVG ref. And we're going to use ref to get that value. And then we are going to use effect. We're going to have a use effect over here. And we're going to make it so that this use effect will re render anytime our data changes. And finally, we are going to set up an SVG with an SVG ref attribute. And we're going to pass in the SVG ref that we've created just like that. So what's going to happen is that we are going to be writing our SVG code inside this use effect. And anytime our data changes, we're going to re-render that SVG element and we're passing it as user ref so that D3 now has access to the DOM. And that's why we are using use ref. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is import D3 as star from D3 like so. And I believe I made the mistake. Instead of SGG, SVG ref, you want to make it to ref right there. So for us to use or to set up our D3 chart, we are going to write a few comments here. And to list out the steps, we are going to first start with setting up our SVG. And then we're going to have to set up the scaling. So the scaling refers to the range of the values of the chart that will it will plot. And then we were going to set the axis, the axes as well. And then finally, we are going to set up, setting up the data for the SVG. So these four steps are generally the main steps that you would go about in creating a D3 chart. Everything in here will involve specifically D3 code. So the first thing we can do is set up our width and the height of the container of the SVG. So we're going to set width as 400. We're going to set height as 100. And we are going to set up our SVG here. And we are going to select our SVG ref, the current value. And we are going to give it some attribute 
width and pass in the width value. And then we're going to add another attribute called the height. And we will pass in the height value. All right. Let's give that a start. See if we see anything. Don't worry about that. It's kind of old code. And if you see here, we have nothing to be seen at this moment. So what we can do to just to see our container, we can add a background value. And we can add D333 coincidence. But this will give us a gray background to see. So this is what we have right now. Um, there's going to be a few things I want to add. I want to add a margin top like so. So we get some spacing at the top. Make sure this is in quotes. And here we go. So this is where our chart's going to be. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the scaling. So basically this will set the scale and like the plot values of the chart. So we're going to start with the X scale and we are going to use scale linear. So this will give us like a linear scale to plot our points. And for the domain, we always need to set the domain and the range for scale and linear. So we're going to start at zero. So in terms of the X, we're going to give a range from zero to the length of our data. I'm going to subtract one. So that will determine how many ticks we have or how many plots we have. And then we're also going to go give it a range and we're going to set that from zero to the width. So basically the width of the entire the left and right values. Then we're going to set up the Y scale. T3. We're going to do the same thing. Scale linear. The values will be a little different though. So we're going to set the domain and we're going to put 0 H as the domain. So that determines the height of our chart. And then we're going to set the range, which is going to be from H to zero. Just realize with the range, it's inverted because we always start from the top left and it goes downwards. So it's kind of inverted in that regard. So the domain involves from the bottom to the height of the chart, from the bottom to the height, and the range involves starting from the top to the bottom. And we are going to create a little bit of a function. Oops. So we're going to generate scaled line. And we're going to use our line function. And we are going to set the x, double i. And we are going to use the x oops we are going to use the x value the x scales sorry the x scales to pass in the i value so this i value is a particular number that we're getting from the d3 and we're going to plot the y value using the y scale so essentially this function right here is generating our line using the D3 function, and we're plotting it using the scales that we have created. And we're also going to give it a curve using curve cardinal. So this will essentially, this part will essentially generate the line that we want to create. And 
scale it appropriately. So for now, we're going to skip the axes. We're going to just set up our line before we do our axes, because that will be another thing. And we are going to select our line here. We're going to pass in the data like so. And we are going to join the path that we have created. And now we have to give it a few attributes. So first off, this will generate our line that we've already created the function for. So generate scaled line. And we are going to pass in the D value, which is another number. So basically this is the data. So the data is getting passed into here and we're passing that data and we're passing that into the scaled line. So we grab our data that we've already set. We're passing it into generate scaled line and that will scale our data appropriately. And also we need to add a few more attributes. These will determine a few things. We're going to add a fill of none because by default, the line will be colored in. We don't want, or the line will be colored in from the top parts of it to the bottom. So we want that, we want it just to be a plain line. And then we also want to add the attribute of stroke and give the color of black so we can actually see it. So having written all that, we're going to, um, I've already started it, but you can start your server using npm run start and we can take a look and voila, we have our line. So every value, like this is 25, this is around 50 and so on and so forth with all the values. Um, the last thing we would need for this is going to be the axes. So we're going to be setting that up. So the first thing we need to do is grab our X axis over here. And we are going to do, give it an axis bottom of X scale. Like so. And we are going to give some ticks to it. And that's going to be the number of data points that we have. We're using data length and we are going to format the ticks i plus one like so if you look here we can't see the ticks yet but that's because we haven't appended it and also we need to make sure our overflow is visible which here we're going to add as another style. And the reason why we're doing it is because right now it's being hidden. So we need to make sure the overflow, like things outside the container, is visible. Okay. We are then going to create our Y axis. And we are going to give it an axis left and pass in our Y scale that we've already created and give it five ticks. We're going to make sure that we have five ticks showing on our graph and we want to append a few things. We're going to append a group tag, make sure it calls our X axis given an attribute of transform so we can actually see or we can actually move because right now the y axis always or sorry the x axis is always going to be at the top but we want that axis to be shown on the bottom so that's why we're adding this translate over here and we are going to create a template string so that we pass in the h value to make sure it um, places it at the bottom. 
So that is our x axis. And then we're going to add another one for our y axis. We'll make sure we call the y axis. And that's it. Now you can see we have all six ticks at the bottom displaying every one of our data points 25, 50, 35, 15, 94, 10. As you can see, that's going to happen over here 25, 50, 30, um, 10, or 15, 90, 10. And these are the values for the Y. And as you can see, a lot of this ends up just being a lot of D3 code, but you can take a look at the docs. Um, there's a lot of setup with D3, a lot of its own language, um, but once you get a handle of it, a lot of it, it's kind of repetitive. You're kind of doing similar things. There's a lot of built-in things. You don't have to worry about a lot of them. Just worry about the main aspects. You just have to set up the SVG, set up the scaling, the axes and make sure you set up the data for that SVG so it actually creates the line and the plot. So as you can see, most of our code is going to be involved in the use effect. And this is where most of our D3 code is going to be written. If you don't fully understand everything that's going on, that's okay. D3 is pretty has a pretty steep learning curve, but most of it involves just a lot of setup of how we can write the code. It has kind of its own language, but once you get the basics down, it shouldn't be too difficult. Um, you just need to know you always set up the SVG, the scaling, the axes, and the actual plot. Once you have that down, it shouldn't be too bad. But as you can see with the non SVG stuff or non D3 stuff, you have the data, you're going to have an SVG ref, you're just going to put it into the use ref, and then you're going to tag it as the SVG element. So that part is pretty simple. Anyways, hope, hope you liked it. Hope that helped. Um, let me know if you have any questions, leave some comments below and make sure to like, and subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.